Mr Chairman, an update at the end of what has been a brilliant season for us, hasn't it? I think if we start by, by looking at this season, I think I've said to Tommy and I've said in a few other interviews, we had two main targets, didn't we, this season? We wanted to, to perform better at the EBB Stadium and we wanted to do a bit better in the Cup competitions and we certainly did that in the FA Cup. So, so what, what, what have your thoughts been this season? I think... Um... It's been mixed. I mean, it's been a fantastic year. I mean, from from, from all fronts. I mean, you know, if, if I talk about the negatives, the negatives have been obviously the FA Trophy. Um, one or two games where we, you know, maybe filed and easily. But, you know, but it, that come with, you know, with all the, the challenges the team had, you know, playing those games. And, you know, they're still a very, very young squad. So... So that if you really look at those two, there's a sort of few of the negative. Injury's been a big, big problem for us this year. I mean, Christian, you know, signed him on Friday and mm. is out about 32 minutes or 33 minutes afterwards. But again, you know, Liam's with the medical. I mean, it's, it's like casualty at sometimes there. And we've had four serious injuries, operations. There's a huge cost to that. But combined with that cost. Uh, is the fact that you need to replace them as well. So there's a, it's a double, double whammy. But you know, over the years we've been pretty lucky. Some 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 season we have that many injuries, but sometimes it goes goes with it. And clearly, we feel sorry for the players and we want to play really. So is that that they're the negative side, that, and you know, sort of uh, things we can't help. Um, positive, you know, you spoke about it. Um, home form's been fantastic. The crowd's been. Fantastic. Um, there was a time a few seasons ago when we scored only 45 goals home and away, and when you play 46 games, that hasn't that hasn't been great. Uh, but this year, you know, it's been entertaining games. Um, the crowds are up. Everybody's gone away. Well, even if you take the example of um, uh, Eastleigh when you're losing five, you know, you, you're down. And the East Bank and the people still singing. They didn't walk away, which is just shows that you know there's, there's passion there with, with with the team and what the team puts out there. So I think that's that's on the league point of view. The, you know what we said to Tommy was you know improve the home form, get the people excited again, cup run, uh, obviously, and a, and a trophy. Okay, so two out of three isn't bad, but you know but. It happens, you know. We've gone to Swindon and put seven goal past them. Things happen, you know. It's one of those things. But like everybody else, the players, managers, we were disappointed at Bishop Stortford. But but you know, if the old cliche, you know, if you offered what we are, where we ended up this year, right at the beginning, and you know, everybody says the same thing, you know, we'll bite your bite your arm off for that. But listen, it's been a great year. Uh, the crowd's been great. The atmosphere has been brilliant, um, you know, and and less is him out, which is even better, <laughs> really, for me. So uh, I think it's been, uh, listen, it, I understand the frustration and we have been frustrated. Uh, but the challenge is going to be next year is to how do you go from here? Mm. Um, because, you know, the expectations, you know, are going to be higher and, and quite rightly so because, you know, we, we, you know it's, it's, it's a fantastic football club and we, we have to strive. And I know Tommy and the... Managers and this all, all the backroom staff and commercial everybody's behind it trying to trying to push on again, but it again will come with challenges. You know that's you know that's what national league is is a unforgiving league. Been involved in for 10, 11 years now, and it's just gets tougher and tougher and tougher. But you know, but long as people are happy, is entertaining football, and we're flirting certain areas, but. Summing up the season, um, we exceeded what what the target was for Tommy, and that's been that's that's what's been great. Well, if I can appeal to the fan in you, because I know you sit up there in the director's box as passionate as anyone around here, what was your favourite moment? On the spot a bit there, but I tell you, what, there's uh, there's lots of favourite moments. I mean, but at home, uh, at home yeah. was um, I think the two goals against Hartlepool right at, like, yeah. near the end. Yeah. I think that was. Just the amazing thing! Oh, great! And then suddenly put two goals away. That that's that's been. Uh, um, in terms of Swindon, uh, I think that was was up there. And I had to, um, you know, I had we we had um, 
you know, like, like, like some of the directors there. We had some of our sponsors there and some staff there. And, you know, when, when you go two up in nine minutes and I'm trying to, and you've got these directors of Swindon sitting in front of you. And <laughs> by the way, I've been through, you know, you know, the Sh- Shortwood or whatever, the, the, the team down in Gloucester, home and away. That, I mean, I, I felt for the way directors, but so we were very respectful. And I kept telling, um, so we go two up, and I said to the John, and I said, "Don't, don't glow, don't just, just sit down, don't shout, you know." And telling Mark Butler, "Don't do this," and you know, you go four nil at half time, and I go in, in and I said, "Look, before we go to the boardroom, look, we've been through this ourselves, so make sure um, we just respect and keep calm and that sort of thing." Because I think we're still going to need another goal to get a draw. <laughs> I say because that's what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, and so I stayed. <laughs> Because after the next five minutes, when you come out that first half, um, you know, come out that end of the first half, and you're thinking the first five minutes is going to be a nightmare. And I was still, so I said, I'll stay in the boardroom and not have. Suddenly, I hear this roar, and I thought, oh, God, they scored, hmm. right? For, you know, but then Matt comes in and says, We just got a penalty because we were so, we had a big crowd, and we we're just behind our crowd. It was our crowd was shouting. I didn't realize that. You go five up, and I'm thinking, it's just an unbelievable day, really, and um, um, and we, we so <laughs> on the way back we also I drove I had, I had Matt in the car I had uh, John Reelan from Natter we had Matt my son and John and Matt and my son turned around I don't know if you've seen them um, I, it, they just sat there and suddenly said right okay who wants to go first and <laughs> um, they looked at it well do you want to go first. My son says no, and my Matt says, "Well, let's go together." And it was that scene out of Only Fools and Horses when they just got four and a half million pounds for selling that watch, <laughs> and they were just shaking the car and shouting. It was just that, that was a great day. I think Swindon was a great day, and, and, and you know, again at um, okay, it was it was tough, tough shout and tough call out at uh, West Bromwich. But the fact you saw these red and blue on the M40 yeah. all the way driving on a Sunday, it was. I think all shot to go with all the service stations and motorways and yeah, it's you know that's what the FA Cup was about. And you're probably going to ask me about. <laughs> go on. Well, that leads in perfectly, she doesn't it? Because in one of those big moments was our replay against Stockport County. Obviously, we got TV revenue from that, didn't we? BBC Two cameras. It was a fantastic occasion for the club as well. I think we kind of announced ourselves in the national stage a bit there as well. And of course, we've just recently had the news that FA Cup replays will likely be scrapped from the first round. So what are your thoughts on that, firstly? So first of all, like everybody else, I found out about these being scrapped, the replays, as like everybody else, every part. The board, the National League board, were not aware of it. Uh, What you need to understand is that up to the first round, it's, it's controlled by um, by the FA, and you know you've got the replays and blah blah blah. When it gets to the first round, it's done by PG something. I can't remember what it is, but professional gaming side. But on that board, or the decision makers are four people from the Premier League and four people from the EFL. We are not in that process, so we we just been given the, the result, and that's what you've got to do. Um, I was at the National League board meeting on um, uh, yesterday, uh, and we discussed that. And there are some. Look, what you've got to look at it is with you know, it's, sadly, it's about money, uh, and where's the money coming from? And every, all the money is now they're really trying to expand is the is the European side of the the side, the TV rights. Um, from a football point of view, you know, I came to England in 1969. Yeah. Fell in love with Chelsea, won the FA Cup against uh, Leeds. I know Mark Butler's not going to be happy, but that was me. That's when I became a Chelsea, and, and, and that was FA Cup for me. That was it, you know. And I remember, you know, you know, all the time during the FA Cup, the Saturday, you know, you you know, the whole week was leading up to the FA Cup. The whole week was, and Saturday you get up at nine o'clock in the morning and get your sandwiches and sit in front of the TV, and you know, the whole, you know. The, Breakfast with the players, then the team travel with on the coach, and you know at Wembley walk on the pitch, watch the game, which is sometimes fantastic atmosphere, 
And then, you know, the team would have dinner afterwards and, you know, they would watch the highlight again on match a day. So I, I think, you know, the FA Cup to me is fantastic. And I was just thinking, it, it, the, the FA Cup is the cup, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, when it should be shown worldwide. So I, I, I just think it's been, you know, devalued a bit. Well, not a bit, quite a bit. Uh, but what the positive side is that there's more money coming in at earlier rounds. So hopefully that that'll come in there. And I'm, they're also talking about getting more TV games at the earlier rounds. So and there's money being from grassroots upwards. There's about thirty odd million pound is going to be pushed not this year but next year. Sadly, it is about about Premier League in Europe, um, but. Cup is very very important to us, and we are, we are fighting still, and we are still negotiating through um, through our chairman with the FA and saying you know what can we do and you know can we still get replays to at least for the second round? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, it's good to see that there is progress being made on that, and that, there we go. There's our stance. I mean, another one maybe to talk about then is is the playoff situation. Obviously, Gateshead were were not granted their EFL license were they which meant they couldn't take part in the playoffs now as we finished eighth the next team outside of that there was unofficial talk of course unofficial talk that maybe we were the team to then go in and replace Gateshead now I guess again with your with your place on the National League board can you shine a bit of a light into the the rulings and stuff around what what happened with that one again honestly because there's conflict for me sitting on the board Hmm. there's conflict for there's you know people from Gateshead on there. There's a conflict for the people from uh, Solihull on there because if 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 you if you knew what was going on now we were aware that Gateshead had had an issue with not complying to EFL rules. It wasn't it wasn't the national league national league rules. It was the EFL rules. Um, we you know Gateshead knew in March that they didn't meet the the, the requirement. Um, they went through appeals and you know sort of um, uh, you know through legal cases, um, and w- what happened was then they went to arbitration, um, and they were only told they failed or well, that the appeal failed on on the Friday before we played um, Dagenham Redbridge. So we weren't aware of it. So. Um, s- so again, no, nobody, you know, it was. It's not the national league. It's the EFL rules. The EFL rules says you need a ten-year lease or an agreement. Um, from from Aldershot, Aldershot Town Football Club point of view, we don't actually have a lease, but we have a letter from the cabinet, from the council, that tells them that there is a minutes legal minutes for the meeting that we've been granted a hundred and whatever years, twenty years lease. So they'll accept that. Sadly, they weren't getting that comfort letter even from uh, from uh, Gateshead Council, and, and and there's a lot of legal case been going on there, arbitration, QCs. So there's a lot of uh, discussions behind the scenes, which again is a conflict for me to know about, which I didn't know about. Um, sadly, and and I, and I feel you know whatever's happened at Gateshead of that in, in the match got postponed. I feel for Gateshead because I feel for the players and I feel for. The management, because you know, you know, they play forty-six game and they're entitled to, you know, they're at Wembley in the tr- in in the trophy, but you know, they should be in the playoffs. Um, but they're not in the playoff because they don't. If they get promoted, they can't get into there. So, uh, in the event that the, the constitution rules are that, if you can't meet it, the team that you know the, the, the other team gets a bye. Um, the the constitution also says at the moment um, that the rules. Um, so to play there, you've got to be finishing the top. You know, to playoffs, you've got to be finishing top seven. If you don't finish top seven, you can't you can't move anybody up, even though you might have got kicked out. However, um, on um, you know that's been highlighted, and what you know, and again, all these rules evolve as you go. So that was highlighted, and these are now being addressed at the national league that we don't end up with this situation again. Yeah, brilliant. That, that shines a light on that one. I mean, if we try and shine a light on something else. We've got the uh, ground development ongoing, haven't we? Now, we got a, a few plans through uh, about last year, last season sometime, didn't we? And, mm-hmm. and saw a lot of the, the progress that had been made behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you give us an update on, on, on the latest on that? 
Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, people feel frustrated and feel like a lot of activities going on, but you know, if you speak to some of the volunteers who've been around, there's lots of activities going around in the back. There's done lots of surveys, reports, the you know, sort of the type of soils that we've got, what trees got, even though none of the trees got um, TPO or uh, you know, tree preservation orders, but they there are some, there's about three trees here that got heritage status, so you can't do that. So we, you know, there's loads of background work. Where the, where the challenge at the moment is, is between is the access that um, being sorted out through, it's MOD, it's well, so MOD represented by Granger, it's the council, uh, and they're just talking about the legal, you know, they're both trying to do is to give us the best deal possible but obviously it's a taxpayer's money and they've got to, be, got to be done the right way. But in principle, everything you know, is agreed. They're just doing the pay, legal paper. As soon as that access is sorted out, the planning will go in. Yeah. Now, when I people put, and I want to again emphasize, when we talk about planning, it's the outline planning. But when we talk about the detail, what's going to go in there, that's when we'll have the consultation with all the supporters. Brilliant. Um, and keeping on the topic of the pitch and the stadium, we've got England C against Nepal coming up, haven't we? That's we've we've spoken about it on our on our media channels about how important that is a fixture for the local community of Aldershot, and and we're looking forward to hosting it, aren't we? Listen, it's been uh, it's a historic event. It's the first time the Nepal team's coming over to um, uh, to to the UK. It's uh, it's a fully uh, sanctioned FIFA game. In fact, we have got. We can't get local referees or even referees in the, in the UK. They have to be FIFA approved referees who are flying in. Um, I, I have to say that um, I had fantastic support from the local community. Um, the FA, they've been, they've been brilliant. Um, some challenging time dealing with people in, 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 in the pool FA, but you know we're getting there. Uh, but. I think it's going to be a, a great occasion. It's a, it's a, the agreement is between Aldershot Town Football Club, FA, and the All Napoli FA. So they're the three people there. Um, you know, there's, there's a whole thing. They're here for about um, just over a week, eight, seven, eight days, and we're hosting them at uh, at uh, Mary's Wood, the team, training at Gordon. England team staying at um, the Holiday Inn, training at Surrey Sports Park, um, hoping, well, it's a manager's choice, but hoping one or, two, well, one or two or maybe three old shot players might be playing in that. Um, but in terms of, uh, it, you know, it's trying to galvanise the community, trying to bring people to it. Um, it's, it's been fantastic, uh, the support in terms of sponsorship, um, in terms of, you know, we've done really well on... Um, Ticket sales, virtually all the seats have been sold out. We have good sponsorships from the, with the Nepalese community for shirt sponsors, the match sponsors, the, you know, it, it, they've been fantastic and they've been out there selling tickets. So I, I would I would envisage maybe about three or 4,000 people here. Um, Sally uses his space, he's only got his now standing room only. Um, and it's, it's good for the town. And you know what? If and and obviously the manager be here, Tommy Tommy be here, and if there's a, one or two talents that he thinks or Nepal that might work for us, I've already spoken to the Nepalese business people and they said, if you're the right people, would you you know, could you sponsor them? And they, they you know in terms of for the year, and they they're quite happy. So I think it's this it's a great opportunity. It's the first one here. It shows you know we are fully you know. Um, inclusive football club rather than exclusive football club and and you know the team was spending a lot the Nepalese team was spending a lot of time in the community engagement and working there so yeah I think this is, 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 is a good buzz and hopefully people come down on that day yeah no, and sticking on to the topic of community I think it'd be important to talk about the Shots Foundation and the brilliant work they've carried on this year because you know we did our community awareness week didn't we in partnership with them and shined a bit of a light on what they do but I think one off the top of my head, the community stand scheme, for example, it's brilliant, isn't it? We're getting in people that you know might not always be able to come to our games and and showing them that here we are. We've got a football club on on your doorstep here, so so, so come in the future. So so talk us through about the involvement that we, the club has with with the foundation. Well, I, look, 
ever since I got involved in the, the foundation, we are the hub of the community. We are, you know, we, we are home of the British Army. We are, you know, and, and, we, we, and that's our brand, home of the army. So very, very, you know, we, we led, and I keep sort of repeating myself, we led on that, you know, 2014 led on every football club to sign up the Military Corporate Covenant. We're the first football club to receive the Silver Employers Recognition Scheme for our work with the military. Um, and the, we cannot do enough for the military. What, whatever we do, I think we should be able to even do more. Um, the challenge, uh, so we have the Vets Hub, you know, sort of once a month Wednesday here where everybody comes together. That's now grown and we have a nice space, so we're now trying to grow, to grow that even more. Um, Jamie's working really closely with, you know, again, a big charity that based in Man they, they, they've got based in Manchester City's ground, Man United, Liverpool. We're going to have a base here to, you know, working with mental health, which is, there's always been some challenges, but I think COVID has brought even more challenges. Jamie and, you know, and, and Kay and, you know, the, the trustees, John Casey and everybody really, really working hard. Um, I think in terms of um, the community stand, you know, um, and I, I might be able to read this for you because, uh, I, because um, 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 I had details from Jamie and um, we had over, you know, 30 grassroots football teams here, yeah. 18 schools and other groups, um, in total over just under three thousand, three and a half thousand tickets were given out, and and we had you know we had feedbacks. We did a questionnaire from them. There was thirty eight percent did not attend matches before using this R scheme, and 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 those th those those thirty eight percent now come back regularly and buy tickets. So you know if we just try and grow grow that um, our you know through the community foundation. So Jamie and obviously. South Farm School are in the final. Uh, Wembley yeah. on, um, yeah. on 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 playoffs. So at least a team got to Wembley uh, there. So that, that that's great. On uh, hopefully they they have a great day there as well. Yeah, and something else that, that with the community stand this uh, this year as well was was a her game too, wasn't it? I know the the academy are doing very well with their uh, girls teams, aren't they? It's, it's something we're looking to to improve to improve on isn't it the, the, the way that women can feel safe around the EBB stadium and, and be represented by our football club yeah look I think in terms of uh, as I said earlier we're not exclusively inclusive you know and 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 ladies and girls teams are really really growing and you know and and we've got to embrace that and we do that so our vision is to still trying to get a team into you know you know, when, when you look at, it, not, I'm not being respectful to Lewis and people, teams like that, but you know, we, we've got you know, this opportunity to get to higher up, um, particularly in the FA Cup. If you do really well, there's good, good revenue. You know, there's good, yeah. good money coming there. But more, but it's not just about money. We want to get the ladies more involved in, and we, you know, we are still discussion about, you know, we've got teams already, the girls team in there. We just want to grow that side of it. Yeah, brilliant. And as we revolve back round to, to the first team, the men's first team, I think obviously we've just had news of the new away kit, season tickets are, are, are just fresh coming out. And and we're really, you know, we're really hoping that the, the progress we've made on the pitch over the last season can, can continue next season, aren't we? It's, you know, first of all, thank, I want to thank all the players that were with us and contributed and, and things move on and they moved on. Um, you know, everybody's you know focusing on Josh Stoke, and it's phenomenal what what he's done. But we wish him all all the best. But we treat everybody you know the same here. You know, because you're representing all Short Town Football Club. Some naturally are more profile than the others, but there's lots and lots of work going in the background. You know, and then you know even in the first team when you look at it, you know, to play 90 minutes on a Saturday, you've got to think how much work gets done behind the scenes to get that 90 minutes. So People might not realise that, but supporters might not. But honestly, we, as a, you know, when we have the operational meeting on a Monday morning when everybody's there, um, you know, you you know, if you have a great win, and this year's been great, we have been fantastic, but when we had a bad result, it's been, you know, we feel it just, just as much. In fact, we probably feel more, more than, we feel more than the supporters because we feel responsible for it. Mm. But I think it's been, you know, we should, you know, all the players have gone, it's great. We retain some staff, some contracts going out there, but you know, that's Tommy's decision. 
on on uh, yeah. what what you know what who he chooses, you know that's uh, you know I've been watching you know so I've been involved in football a long time. I watch on this you know I've probably watched over five hundred games here. I mean this season again I only missed one game which was Gatesway Gateshead thank God. Uh, but apart from that I watched all the games and I watched the games and say over five hundred games and I probably roughly I probably qualified enough to run a Sunday, you know, third team in a pub team. <laughs> I, I understand football, but yeah, when it comes to players and talent, you know, you, you've got manager, that's his decision. And I always believe all, all, all day of since, since the first time, you know, after administration, 13, 14, it's a manager's decision. Well, it's ironic you should bring up the manager, Shahid, because obviously the latest breaking news is that we've extended Tommy's contract and, and how brilliant and how brilliant is that? Well, look, um, is you know we as a board, you know myself, John, Dean, we work very very closely. Um, I work very closely with him because you know I, I'm there. I I'm not in his ear all the time. I don't you know I don't you know I just um, we, we we so I, I think Litson he loves I, I believe he does. He might be telling me lies then, <laughs> but he loves what we do. Uh, he's been well looked after. Um, Trying to accommodate wherever we can, and you know it's just not, you know it's not just um, Tommy. It's, it's all all the back room staff as well. You know Dave, the Colby team, Leo. You know all these um, Terry. You know so there's lots of stuff behind the scenes that get there, and you know and, and there's people, hidden people like Brad. People, you, you know the stuff that he managed on logistics, make everything is right. So he's, they have a good team. What what's really pleasing for me. Is that the feedback I get back from um, Gordon School? They say how impeccably well behaved they are, how you know respectful they are. So I think that that culture is driven by the manager, and I think that's been something that's uh, it's been great. And I think and I think if you speak to the foundation, you speak to the supporters uh, group, you know, whenever they want, you know, manager or players, they all been made available. So I think there's been a real, you know, supporters and you know groups and players and foundation, you know, they 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 all on the same, same hymn sheet. And as we look ahead to next season, have we got any targets in mind? You don't have to be too specific. You don't have to give away what you've been uh, demanding of Tommy and the staff. But it's, there's obviously going to be a bit more expectation, I guess, next year naturally when you've performed a bit better over last season. But but what are we looking for next year? More of what we had this year, I would say. Uh, more home form. Um, I, you know, I, I'm thinking that entertainment's there. The crowds are, are there. Uh, I mean, the sponsors, I've got to, you know, and what I mentioned is sponsors, they've been fantastic. Um, and what Mark's doing commercially. Uh, and, and people like yourselves and Michael and, you know, uh, Cheryl and Bob and all these people behind the scenes, you know, there's. There's a real, real good, good stuff going on in there. Um, so more of what we had this year, and I sometimes do read social media stuff. Oh, we don't want to get promoted. I have never heard so much rubbish in my life. You know, all the sport, all the players are competitors. Competitors. They want to win every game. You know, I don't think anybody wants to go there. Want to lose because you're in sports or whatever you are. I hate losing. Mm. I do. I hate losing. I get so depressed about it. Um, but we want to win everything. But there's you know 24 odd teams in, in in the league, and this year you've got teams coming down, um, Sutton and Forest Green, and then you've got people like so Yeovil or Scunthorpe or Tamworth or well, any any of those. Well, you've got Yeovil and uh, Tamworth coming through, yeah, yeah. and then you've got you know potentially Scunthorpe or you know whoever's going to come through the playoffs. Uh, who are you going to lose? Well, you, you, you know, there's, there's, at the moment there's semi-finals coming up. So, you, you know, there's Barnet, you've got Altrincham, you've got Bromley and, and Solihull. Yeah. So, again, you look, so listen, it's going, to be a, it's going to be another tough, tough. This league, honestly, is the most toughest league to get out of. Everybody says the two toughest leagues to get out of is champ, you know, a championship into the Premier League or from National League into League Two. And once you get out of League Two, and when you look at some of the, in the last, I had some stats, out of the, 
there's about 40 odd teams that come to the national league in in, in there, and one of them, one of them is in Premier League now. Mm. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? I mean, I guess when you look at the the, the teams that are going to be leaving the division this year. And people obviously last last season people were arguing weren't they Notts County and Wrexham are leaving it's less competitive but in actual fact it surely makes it a bit more competitive doesn't it we've seen this year that you know Boreham Wood went from a playoff team to, to getting relegated we went from a team that was battling relegation to battling for the playoffs teams move around every year don't they so it's all about I guess from now from our point of view a bit of you know consistency and carrying on the way we're going I think we had two Playoffs in, in in there, and the first one was yeah we we lost at Tranmere. The second one we lost uh, to Penny Shoe out against Ebbsfleet. And the following years, you know, we should have been relegated with a bigger budget and everything yeah. else. So, what's gone on last season? Great, you enjoyed it. File it, put it in your desk. It's been a great memory. Put that as a memory. This year is going to be another restart, reset, restart, and everybody, all of the 24 teams will have, yeah, we're going to go for it. So it's not, it's, you know, it's a very, very difficult. As I said earlier on, if we can have more of what we had this year, you know, I think that would be fantastic. I, you know, you don't want to put, it's not about putting pressure on them. Look, everybody, I would love to win the league. I want to win the league, but you've got to also manage your you know, expectations.